All right, kids, uh, once again, very sorry for the disruption in the live stream earlier today. Um, as I mentioned before, I was quite used to the bandwidth and the speed of my connection at home. So I was predicting that there might be some lag or trouble, but not that it would entirely crash my connection. And um, I tried connecting from my mobile phone using my own data plan, uh, but I think the mobile connection is not as stable. The bandwidth is not as broad as uh, is necessary for an immediate live stream and interaction with all of you. So I'm recording this video and I'm going through this close passage sort of as a remedial measure. Okay, so again, uh, my apologies. I certainly did not plan to do it this way and I was looking forward to a lot of interaction and discussion with all of you and listening to all your alternative answers. Uh, as it is for now, as you're watching this video, if you find that your answers differ from mine and you think that they are within the same word class and they can fit into the blank, please uh, take a note of it or circle the, the number on the worksheet that I've given to you and you can ask me uh, tomorrow morning when we meet each other uh, in class uh, even before the day begins. Alright, then I can give you some explanations in case you're not sure about why your answer may or may not be acceptable. Alright, without further ado, let me start again on the video. Right, uh, This, as I mentioned, is a passage that you need to read in its entirety and look at it from beginning to end to guess the genre or the type of text that it is. There are some clues, of course. For example, looking at the word roars, gallops, and hunts, these are verbs in the simple present tense. And as we were discussing, verbs in the simple present tense are very, very specific. And they're not telling you specifically about it happening in the present. They're telling you that these are either statements of fact or statements of habit. And usually, statements of fact are found very much in information, text, texts that deal with non-fiction content, much like Chloe and the rest of you mentioned. Non-fiction texts often employ uh, simple present tense to express statements. Why? Because they are dealing with facts that do not change over time. All right? So, simple present tense, subject very clearly about animals and about nature. Therefore, I can construe or I can infer from these clues that I'm dealing with an information text and it follows from that that all the verbs that occur or most of the verbs that occur in an information text will, by their very nature, be in the simple present or the present forms of the verb. All right, so let's move on. Um, like I mentioned, for question 51, my clue is the plains of Africa. It's a location. It's a noun phrase. Okay? And a noun phrase um, that comes after a blank is usually going to mean that this blank here is either an adjective or it's some kind of preposition. Because remember, um, adjectives describe nouns and prepositions tell you the positions of the noun phrase. And in this case, it's a preposition. Why? Because there's a verb, gallops. A black rhinoceros gallops. So the verb gallops describes the action the black rhinoceros is taking where the plains of Africa. So I need a connecting preposition that tells me the location of the action, which is across. So a black rhinoceros gallops across the plains of Africa. All right? Why not on the plains of Africa? Because he's not galloping on, he's galloping across. The action is one that brings the animal um, from one point to another, not static in one location. So not on the plains, but across the plains of Africa, there's movement, all right? Next one, question 52. I'm so sad I can't discuss this answer with you, but I'll just go ahead and tell you the answers. A mother blue whale and her calf glide through the deep. Remember, we talked about the fact that deep is an adjective. It's a descriptive adjective. Therefore, the word that follows after deep has to be a noun, all right? And an adjective describes a noun. And the adjective is describing a noun that belongs to the ocean. So what is deep and of the ocean? The deep waters of the ocean. Not the deep water, but the deep waters. Because oceans are you know, bodies of water that span many, many different locations. So the deep waters of the ocean. All right? Not one water, but deep waters of the ocean. Many, many waters, many different um, pools of water across the globe. All right, so that's 52. Again, notice how I'm using the word types to narrow down my answers for each of the questions. Question 53. All of these animals share the earth, and then there's the word us after the blank. 
So again, us is a pronoun, a collective pronoun, us. Therefore, what comes before it can only be an adjective or a preposition. And again here, notice that it's a noun phrase, a pronoun, a collective pronoun, share is a verb. So what comes between a verb, share the earth or share, and us? Again, it has to be a preposition because the preposition links the verb to the noun. So, share the earth with us. They fascinate us with their beauty and speed. We love observing their behavior and learning more. Again here, their habits is a noun phrase. What are we learning more of? We are learning more of their habits. So, noun phrase, their habits, verb, learning. Therefore, again, another preposition linking the verb learning more. And more is incidentally an adverb more describing the verb learning, adverb, right? Learning more about their habits, all right? So we learn more about something. What is that something? Their habits. And the word about serves to link learning more and their habits. Notice that there are quite a number of prepositions occurring within this particular passage. And this is very common when we are dealing with information texts. So again, remember, if you notice this is an information text, simple present tense, plenty of prepositions, plenty of nouns as well, right? Because I'm making factual statements about particular subjects, okay? Next, question 55, all right, 55 here. All of these blank are endangered. So this is very interesting. All of these is describing something. It's actually an adjective phrase, right? And we find the same phrase, all of these, Way back at the beginning of the same paragraph, all of these, and it's a dead giveaway, right? All of these animals share the earth, so therefore, all of these animals are endangered, all right? So, the same recurring pattern, I'm making a connection between an earlier statement and my current one, and I'm inferring the answer by looking at the pattern that this particular passage follows, all right? So, so far, I'm coming almost to the halfway point of the passage and I am very confident that all of my answers are correct. Why? Because I'm using the clues from the passage to narrow down and pinpoint the correct word and the word type that can fit into each of these blanks. So, all of these animals, the noun animals, are endangered. Alright, next, question 56. Many of them have died and without special care, they may. Now, this is a hypothetical or future statement. They may. The modal may tells me that there is a possibility in the future that they may and something that happens that takes them from the earth. So, the idea is that they may someday vanish or disappear from the earth. So, be careful. If you don't want to put a word that does not link the modal may someday and the prepositional phrase from the earth right so they may someday vanish vanish where from the earth right so this answers the where question it's a prepositional phrase okay good next let's move on to the next couple of questions why is it important to care for animals like these so notice why is it important one reason is another reason is all of these are in the simple present form telling me that this is information text with statements of fact, okay? Another reason is the beauty of the animals themselves. Each species of animal is special. Once it is gone, it is gone. Okay, so it's quite easy, right? Once it is gone, it is gone forever. So I don't even need to use a word type to narrow down the word here. It's a very commonly used phrase. Once gone, gone forever is a common phrase that we use to describe when something cannot be returned or when something is permanent in its effect. When it is gone, it is gone forever. And forever is one single word, all right? Now, the interesting twist is we go into the past tense form because we are recalling the past Africa in the past. Africa was once, right? So it was once filled with N. And this is very important. Be very careful and alert. The article N. Remember articles a, uh, n, and the, right? In this case, the article N, a, n, describes a word, a noun, because articles always pair with nouns, 
a noun which begins with the a, e, i, o, u, or vowel sound. All right, so it can't be any noun. It has to be a noun that begins with the a, e, i, o, u, vowel sound. So what is a vowel sound noun that describes many, many types of wild animals? That's right, an abundance of wild animals. So article paired with a noun, and this noun must be in an a, e, i, o, u, vowel sound starting. So in this case, a, a, e, a, i, a, an abundance, a, of animals, right? So the vowel sound allows me to narrow down the answer to abundance of animals, an abundance of wild animals, okay? This is a noun, right? Abundant change using the suffix ANCE to abundance, right? Changes from a verb, um, I'm sorry, changes from an adjective, abundant, to abundance, a noun, right? So abundance of wild animals. Next, question 59. The elephant, which seems to represent all that is strong and wild in Africa, is endangered, killed for its ivory. In this case, ivory is describing something, right? So it is a noun phrase. The first noun, like ice cream, in this case, ivory, what is it that is made of ivory that elephants have? Ivory tusks, right? And it's more than one tusk, it's many tusks, because elephants are being killed for them. So, killed for its ivory tusks. It usually comes in a pair, right? So, ivory tusks, more than one tusk. Alright, let's move on. The fastest land animal, the cheetah, is becoming extinct as people take over more and more of the land that is the cheetah's habitat. Habitat is simply a place where animals live. In South America, right, blank of the rainforest threatens many animals. Okay, so notice I'm reading the entire sentence and using the context in the sentence to narrow down the answer. So in this case, the context is threatens, right? So something threatens the animals. Something threatens the animals. So the something of the rainforest threatens many animals. So what threatens the animals? What is it? What threatens them, right? So this word here that fits into question 60 must link to off the rainforest and it must be a noun form because it answers the what question. What threatens many animals? It's the destruction of the rainforest. So what threatens them? Destruction. Threatens these animals. Destruction. Alright? So notice again I'm using the word type to narrow down the answer. Unusual mammals such as the howler monkey and the tree-toed sloth are endangered. Beautiful birds. So unusual animals such as the howler monkey, beautiful birds. Can I write such as the green macaw? No because I can only put one word in question 61. But can you see the pattern? Such as the howler monkey, beautiful birds such as the great green macaw, but I can't use such as. So what is another word that has the same meaning or function as such as, right? That comes after beautiful birds and before the great green macaws that links them, right? Has to be a verb, right? Such as, like, okay? Beautiful birds, like, the green macaw, the great green macaw. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, there's a mistake here, right? This is not a verb, all right? So I apologize, all right? This is a comparative adjective, all right? It's functioning uh, to compare, right? Beautiful birds like the great green macaw and the golden parakeet are also becoming extinct. They are losing their what in the rainforest? They are losing something, right? And where is that something? It's in the rainforest. So something in the rainforest, again, it answers the question, what are they losing that is in the rainforest? It's a noun. They are losing their homes, right? They are losing their homes or their habitats in the rainforest. And thousands more die when they are caught and shipped off. So they are caught and then they are shipped off to be what? As exotic Pets. So they're shipped off, right? They are caught, they are put into boxes, and then they are shipped off into faraway countries to be what as pets? To be. So the word to be, to be, 
tells me that it's part of a verb. There is a missing verb in question 63, and it is in the present perfect form, to be. Alright, so to be sold as exotic pets. Alright, to be sold as exotic pets. Alright, excellent. So we can see here that knowing that it's a verb and knowing that it's part of a present perfect form, be, right? Be allows me to narrow down the verb to be sold rather than to be sell or to be selling, right? Because it's a present perfect form, this is the participle sold, all right? So again, knowing the word type is very powerful. Using the clues, knowing the word type allows me to narrow down my answer very effectively. Final two questions. The giant panda of Asia is fascinating and unique, yet there are only about 1,000 still living in the wild. The giant panda's blank, 64, consists mainly of the bamboo plant. So, consists mainly of the bamboo plant. So, what do pandas do to bamboo? They eat them, right? So, the bamboo, therefore, is what? All right, it's a what question. What is it? It is the giant panda's diet, right? The giant panda's diet, right? So, his diet or her diet consists mainly of the bamboo plant. Can I say the giant panda's food consists mainly of the bamboo plant? Well, this is rather borderline, I would say. Um, does its food consist mainly of the bamboo plant? Well, in a certain way, yes. They only eat mainly bamboo plant. So their food is mainly the bamboo plant. I will accept food, all right? But it's still the same uh, word. It's a noun, right? It's a word type noun. So when bamboo forests die, so does the panda, right? Because it has nothing to eat, it starves to death. China is now making an what? So again here, I have an, an article that describes or is linked to a noun that must begin with a vowel sound, okay? So what is China making? China is making an effort, right? It's a what? What is it making? It's an effort to protect these special creatures, all right? So that's it. If you are able to use these two very simple strategies, one is you know, highlighting contextual clues within the same sentence or linking different parts of the passage. If you're able to narrow down the word type because the neighboring word will tell you what type of word is missing, you should be able to, with a high degree of accuracy, arrive at the correct answer to pluck out of your mind and into the blank to reasonably expect that you'll get it correct. All right, so I hope that this very short video um, is helpful. And again, this video is short because we were supposed to have a discussion phrase, we're supposed to look at different answers, and we're supposed to talk about why it is or is not acceptable. But because of the limited bandwidth, I'm not able to have this interactive session with all of you. And I hope that this video will go some way towards helping you apply these comprehension close passage strategies more effectively. You can always come back to this video again, uh, but I want you to apply what you've learned here in the next passage that I've given to you, which is the other passage that's on the other side of the paper, the handout that I've given to you. Please apply these two very simple strategies of highlighting the clues and then using the neighboring words to narrow down the word type. These two clues will go a long way towards helping you be more effective in your comprehension clues. The target being achieving at least 10 or more out of 50. All right, thank you very much for your attention to this video and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.